When it comes to sound bars, Samsung has always been one of the best options out there. In today's tech video, we are going to unbox and set up the Samsung S800B. Okay, so here's the front of it, and on here you'll see where it's got the branding nameplate. There is a speaker with a soft covering right here. This is the back. It's got the big old hole here for the uh, subwoofer outlet. The power cord goes here, and then here is an ID set button that you push here to get it paired up with a soundbar. All right, so let's see what's inside the bag here. The bag full of goodies. So they give you the power cables for one for the subwoofer, one for the soundbar. And good, they give me an optical cable here. I was kind of wondering that if I was gonna have to order this separately because a lot of times some of these companies will save costs by not sending you the right cables that you need. But here's the optical cable that I'll use to tie this in directly into the TV. Here's the other end of the power, plug in uh, the sound bar. A lot of times these uh, square parts here are so beefy. This one, kind of a medium, medium size. The user manual, I don't know who reads these things. Okay, two angle brackets here to mount the sound bar if you were going to mount this onto the wall. I have a tendency of losing these things, but um, I'm gonna be setting mine on the console underneath the TV right there, so I won't be using this. This right here is another part of the uh, mounting bracket that kind of helps support, push it out from the wall. Uh, some more nuts and bolts if you were going to hang it onto the wall. And now here is the remote. I'm always interested to see what the remotes on these things look like. Batteries, I always give these off the wall named brand batteries. This one's called Mustang. Now, who's ever heard of that? Why can't they send me like a Duracell or a Energizer? Now the remote looks similar to the TV remote that I have, the Samsung TV remote. Uh, let me show you the difference. And here is a TV remote right here, soundbar TV. So you can see they're pretty similar, but I imagine once I get the sound uh, soundbar hooked up, I would really hope that I can get it uh, hooked up to using just one remote because I hate having to use two remotes. So we'll see how that pairs up with it and see if we can just use the one remote, the TV remote. I'll go ahead and put the batteries in to the soundbar remote. Okay, everything's unboxed here. I'm gonna go ahead and get the, all the power cables hooked up into the subwoofer and the sound bar and get it up there and get it plugged in and get it set up. Okay, on the back side of this, there is a USB output. There's an auxiliary in output, a digital. This is where the optical cable is that I will be using to be plugging in from here into the TV. And on the other side here, they got an HDMI in and then they've got the TV arc out. So this is the, the other, HDMI arc out and then right here is the power outlet the DC uh, 24 volt. This is all on the back side. Okay, everything's all hooked in here now. Soundbar is displayed underneath the TV. I was a little bit concerned about that once I got the soundbar on there because I didn't know how high it was gonna be to the bottom of the television there. And it's like right there, it's almost perfect. And then I got a little bit concerned to see if the sensors would still be able to read a remote control, but it's fine. I don't even know where the sensors are on that TV. They're really hidden and discreet. So I don't know if they're in the screen somewhere, but now whenever I turn up the volume, you'll see it says AV soundbar automatically recognizes the, the make and the model of the soundbar. There's a plus symbol that lights up on the corner so it signifies on the soundbar and it signifies on the television. Okay, the subwoofer is connected to the soundbar. Let me tell you, I've never experienced such an easier setup process than this right here. The way this works is once you plug in the subwoofer right here, it automatically connects to the soundbar right away. So that not, you don't even need to push in the button on there to pair it. It automatically do that or did that. And one of the ways that you can tell if it is paired is on the back side of the subwoofer, you'll see that there's a blue light right there shining. So that means that it is connected. Another little bit of information, if it is blue, that, it, that means that it is connected. If it's red, then that means that there's an issue in the setup process. And if it's blinking blue and red together, then that means there is a malfunction. So make sure you watch the indicator light, but I don't think you should have any problems if you're hooking this up. 
Seems simple enough. Now you are able to hook this up wirelessly via Bluetooth, but I mean, if they give you one of those optical cables, I really recommend to go direct line in. Sometimes you never know what kind of issues that you'll have going through uh, wireless through Bluetooth technology. I know it's pretty solid, Bluetooth is, but if you can go wired in, definitely do that. So that's what I did, wired in. Okay, so the good thing is uh, we were able to use the TV remote for the soundbar and TV together, so I will only be using one remote. No need to have two different remotes, one to run a soundbar or one to run a TV. Everything will be accessed through this one right here. This is the TV remote, so I like that. Less remotes is better. Okay, so we're gonna do a little sound test to give you guys, uh, I know it's gonna be hard for you guys to really tell, uh, maybe, uh, depending on what kind of sound system that you have, if it's coming through your computers. But I'll give you guys a little test of what it's gonna sound like. And uh, I just did a little trial run. Let me tell you, it is a big difference between using a sound bar and just using the speakers on the TV. Um, it gets pretty loud without having to turn it up very far. So much so that my wife is sitting behind me and she started squinting her eyes like that because it was just getting kind of loud for her, but can listen in. Okay, so that sounded pretty good. Um, I'm very pleased with this purchase so far. Sounds like it's gonna be a really good sound bar. Now, something to note here, the base there, it pushes out through the back. In my particular surroundings, I've got it on a cornered wall right here, but when it pushes out, it kind of travels up so we could hear the bass really well. I know everybody, everybody's environment's gonna be a little bit different. Um, I do have a higher ceiling, so some of the sound that comes out from the top of the speakers is gonna to have to travel up quite a way, quite a ways to uh, kind of fill the room, but it does push out from the ends here. Uh, we can hear that perfectly fine. So if you do have a lower ceiling, you should be able to hear it and get all that rich sound that comes from this sound bar. Um, but yeah, it's pretty easy to set up and it sounds fantastic, so. Well, hopefully this video was helpful to you. If it was, click a thumbs up on this Go ahead and subscribe to my channel. I make tech videos all the time and I would love to have you back in the next one. Take care.